Hey everybody, RC here from Kelby Training. I wanted to share with you guys a clip from a class that we have on the kelbytraining.com website. This was a class between Jack Rosnicki and Ed Greenberg on registering your images with the copyright. Now, Ed is a lawyer out of New York City that specializes only in copyright for photographers. That's what he does. So he sat with us and he took us through the process from start to finish. He sat with Jack Rosnicki. And while the process was really easy, the conversations that they had with one another were just invaluable. I learned a ton of stuff just in those interactions. Now, if you wanna watch the class in its entirety, obviously go to kevytraining.com and take a look at the whole class. Also. Make sure that if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, that you subscribe at the top, you leave a comment at the bottom, and share this with everybody that you know that's looking for great information for photographers looking to copyright. Before we go over the mechanics uh, step by step and jump over to the copyright office itself to see how to register something, um, we want to explain why to register, what rights, so we explain the bundle of rights, what mm -hmm. rights do I have under copyright. Right. So now under registration, what rights do I get by registering my work? You can get money. <laughs> you can get money. Uh, that's a good reason Your right there. Your spouse can get money. Even a more important reason. Right. Your landlord, maybe, can get money. Um, the very first right you have uh, when you register that you don't have if you don't register your work is simply the right to sue. Somebody infringes your work, somebody violates your work, and I can't explain it. When people get infringed, they say it does feel like a violation. It's like somebody took one of their kids. All of a sudden, here's something they create. <laughs> their favorite. Yeah. Um, and it's it's an image that they've worked on, you know, it's part of them, it's, they know every little nuance on it. It's funny, when you see a group of pictures, it's like looking for your kid, you can spot it like that, you go, that's mine. And they say when it's infringed, it does feel like a violation. Especially if you're a photojournalist or you've taken a shot in a war zone or you've smuggled images out, all these kind of sexy ways that uh, many of my clients have actually taken uh, newsworthy or historical photographs. Or just it could be a fairly routine advertising shot or looks like a fairly routine advertising shot, but you went through, uh, t through hell to get it. Or so, it could be a simple shot that, that's a snapshot, but it's right. one of your favorites. It, it doesn't matter. Absolutely. But what do we mean by, Ed, um, I'm going to throw this over to you. Um, why can't I sue if I'm not registered? Because the registration itself, that piece of paper that you get back from Washington, is literally the key to the courthouse. One of the most persistent, obnoxious myths that lives in this industry is going to small claims court or going to court to sue without a registration. You can't. Any judge in a small claims court should throw you out of court. The United States Constitution and the United States law specifically provide that if you have a violation of a copyright, you must, have to, gotta go to federal court. And that's serious, federal yeah. court. You must. You do not have the option. You could file a case in a local court and the clerk will gladly deposit your check and cash it and then you will be escorted literally or figuratively out of the courthouse by either your, the opponent attorney, even if he or she has an IQ of seven, and there are many attorneys who have IQs that high, or the judge. Once you have that registration, it permits you to file a lawsuit in federal court. Without paying that fee, without having that registration in hand, you cannot proceed in federal court. So it's a period. Good, it's a good clue if my lawyer doesn't want to go to federal court or do something else. That's my clue is that he's not an intellectual property lawyer and really doesn't know what he's doing. If you get violated for copyright infringement and and your work is registered, um, you don't want to go to your cousin's next door neighbor who used to date someone who's now a lawyer uh, to get a lawyer. You really want to be able to get an intellectual property attorney, somebody who handles these types of things. And if, and if he or she is not familiar with going to federal court, regardless of what the attorney is telling you, then that attorney is not an intellectual property attorney, uh, if he's not familiar with, the, with those venues. Now, once you get to court, 
and when I say get to court figuratively, when you prepare a complaint, when your attorney prepares a complaint, which is the initial paper that says what you're suing for, who you're suing, and why you're suing, you have an assortment of remedies. Think of this as a Las Vegas buffet. What can I get from the buffet? And if you are image, if you are registered and you've registered properly and in a timely fashion, you have an assortment of things that, as they say on the quiz shows, here's what you can get. Number one, you may be entitled to what are called compensatory damages. And in the simplest, simplest explanation is that's what you would have charged if the infringer had come to you and asked to use it and you had freely negotiated this particular usage. That's one thing you're entitled to. Secondly, if your image has been registered, the use has been without your consent, your image has been stolen, appropriated, scanned, any other word you like, statutory damages by law are available. Those damages and the amount of damages that the judge or a court can award you have nothing, little to nothing to do with what you would have charged had you agreed to do the work. It is a method by which the court, in effect, penalizes an infringer for stealing your work. In some cases, in some willful and egregious cases, a court can award $150,000 for the appropriation or infringement of your image, regardless of the economic value. Recently, in one of our cases, Michael Greco sued the Everett Collection, and the Everett Collection's claim was, well, yes, Mr. Greco's images were on our website, yes, we didn't have permission, but we only made a few hundred dollars, so no big deal. Well, the judge in the New York Federal District Court said, we don't care how much you made. That's not what's called de minimis or insignificant. You stole his images. What he may be entitled to is a separate issue, but it's a theft, it's an infringement. And one of the things that absolutely drives us crazy a lot of times and stuff is photographers are saying, oh, somebody infringed my work, I'm gonna bill him for three times. Never. That's, that's another Never. one of those myths that have Never. been floating for a long time. Never. It actually inhibits you. It will limit how much money you can make in some right. cases. And among other things, you cannot possibly know if you see your image in the Home Depot on Smith Street in Dubuque, Iowa. You would have no way of knowing whether it's being used by the Home Depot in Los Angeles, California, or Minnesota, or anywhere else, or whether Stanley Tool or some other company has a tie-in ad. So you never send out this triple invoice nonsense. Uh, understand that just because a photographer knows how to take a picture does not mean they know anything about the law. You should not assume that any photographer knows anything more about the law than they do about podiatry or dentistry or lung surgery. <laughs> Photographers inexplicably go to other photographers for advice on legal issues when they wouldn't dream of doing it about medical issues. And what happens is, is it's bad information on bad information and it feeds itself and it starts to become urban myths. The law also provides with registration that you may be entitled to recover all of your lawyer fees. Oh, now we're talking money. This, this makes lawyers and their spouses very happy and should make you happy. So if you don't have to dig down and pay for your lawyer, or if you've paid for your lawyer, you get that money back, uh, that's walking into a casino and playing with their money.